come on. Let him feel welcome. If God has put a stamp of approval on your life, if you have a, a, a direct line of accountability, accountability, and your elders have given you a license to minister in the kind of way, you don't need anyone's approval. Anyone's approval. You do what God has called you to do. You do it in the lane he has called you to do it in, and you do it with all of your might. With all, all of your might. Praise the Lord. Good evening, everybody. Stretch, stretch a little. Stretch your brain because of what was just given. Amen. Uh, that was from Dr. Archibald. That wasn't bones. It was a whole buffalo. Thank you for that phenomenal message, Dr. Archibald. Can we show some love to the genius, Mr. Archibald? To our phenomenal visionaries and hosts, such august, loving people, Bishop Michael Conqua, Bishop Pisa Conqua, full of love, compassion, care, and of course your wonderful family, the gorgeous Uche, the handsome Kachi, Kachi Ome Mani for our child. To all the leadership from the Trim leadership, I, I recognize many of you. It's good to see you, Obina. Archbishop, I love that dress. Please, can you return my suit after church? <laughs> to all of you, and of course, to our online viewers around the world, thank you for being with us these last evenings. And thank you for your feedback that you've given to us personally and to the corporate group of uh, TREM. It's so meaningful so that we know and that they know their contribution uh, in this conference and many is, is blessing so many from New Zealand all the way to the United States. So can we show our online guests some love by putting our hands together? Amen. And can you give yourselves a hand for being here this evening? Chich and I get up really early in the morning. I'm not a morning person, I'm grouchy in the mornings. But we really got up after Mike explained to us some of the economic challenges that are being experienced. And I was quite stunned to see less traffic on the roads due to the cost of fuel. No, it's not, it really isn't funny because the, the domino effect affects people way on the bottom. And so we're gonna continue to play for Nigeria because generally, as Ghana and Nigeria are, Zimbabwe becomes, and we don't want to become. You may be seated. I'm going to be preaching to you for about 44 minutes, and my subject this evening is entitled, Jesus Stands Alone. The incomparable Christ, the incomparable Christ. He stands in a class of his own. The scripture we have chosen for this are two, John 3 verse 34 and Hebrews 13 verse 8. And while you are going there, I'd like Chichi to stand alone so everybody can see what she's wearing. Come on, Chi Chi. That's my squeeze. That's my girl. Turn around. That's where your money's going. Amen. If I ever have heart failure, it's because Chi Chi has given it to me. Amen. Thank you for coming with me on this trip. John chapter number 3, verse 34. This is an amazing chapter. Uh, I think I'm going to spend about six months on John chapter number 3 because most of the conversation is to a single man who comes at midnight. And so I'm going to be dealing with midnight conversations. He's talking to Nico and he's saying to Nicodemus so many rich things 
the most famous scripture in the world, John 3.16, comes at midnight. And he concludes, Nicodemus says, we know that our man comes from God, for no man can do these miracles except God be with him. And Jesus says, you must be born again, pushing the accolades away. And then he concludes by saying, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives him the spirit without measure. He gives him the spirit without measure. In other words, it is not limited. It is measureless. In Galagata, Sakawanda, it's massive. Say the spirit without measure. Say the spirit without measure. This Jesus without measure in terms of spirit potential lives in each of us right now. Which means that we have no limits in anything we attempt to do. And I'm in 13 verse 8 of Hebrews. Jesus Christ, let's say it. We sound like grade one kids, let's say it together. Jesus Christ, Amen. And is in every one of us right now. Father, add a blessing to this word. I start my clock now. About 2,000 years ago, a magnificent archangel named Gabriel left the terrestrial realm left the celestial realm and came to the terrestrial earth and brought a stunning message to two older people, Zachariah and Elizabeth, and told these seniors, you are going to conceive a son. He will be a forerunner for a Messiah that has been promised for many thousands of years. You will name him John. This glamorous, splendorous archangel then visited a little town in Nazareth with a handful of people and visited an innocent young woman by the name of Mary or Maria and told her that she'd be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit and that she would conceive as a virgin a child of the Holy Spirit, the Savior of the world, and they were to name him Jesus or Yeshua, for he would save his people from their sins. Mary could not fully comprehend that word and said, be it done unto me according to thy word. Can we say that? As the months progressed, Mary visited her cousin Elizabeth to tell her what had happened. Up until this point, John had not moved in Elizabeth, but when Mary came, the baby began to leap. And her greeting to her niece was, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women. And any time you become acquainted with Jesus at any level, you become blessed or blessed amongst the people that don't know the Lord. This Jesus was born in Bethlehem. And on the way to Bethlehem, Mary asked Joseph, Honey, did you make a reservation at the hotel for us? And Joseph said, oh no, I forgot. And that was the first silent night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> there was no room in the inn. He was born in a stable. His cradle was a manger. The angels of the nine choirs in the heavens blast out to the shepherd saying, born to you, this day in the city of David is a savior who is Christ the Lord. And the shepherds went as shepherds to examine the Lamb of God 
who was to be the sacrifice, the eternal sacrifice. They found no spot, no blemish, a perfect lamb for a perfect sacrifice to bring a perfect salvation. Along the way, wise men followed his star and brought responsible gifts. They came via the palace of Herod the Terrible, Herod the Great, who built an astonishing temple, Matthew chapter 24. And they said, we've come to pay homage to the prince that's been born. And Herod said, well, uh, when you find him, please tell me. They found the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes. A swaddling cloth is a cloth with the genealogy very meticulously and carefully embroidered in there of who your forerunners were. And that swaddling cloth authenticated the genealogical structure in chronological order of the Christ child. And they brought responsible gifts. One brought gold to refer to the deity of this God child born. One brought frankincense, an aroma for the sacrifice of praise that he represented from the tribe of Judah. And another brought myrrh to deaden the pain of a sinless being living in a sinful world. Because it's very painful living in a place of debauchery when you are trying to live a life of perfection. Coincidentally or incidentally, when he was now going to the cross, some women offered him a drink with myrrh to kill the pain. As a baby, the myrrh was received to help him cohabit with sinners. But on the way to his crucifixion, he refused to deaden the pain because he was tempted in all points as we are yet without sin. He wanted to feel the pain, the worst of the worst of every human being. Herod killed the babies in Bethlehem when he heard that he'd been double-crossed. Egypt received Jesus. After four years when Herod died and your enemies eventually do die, he returned to Nazareth. Turn to your neighbor and say, you will outlive your enemy. Amen. That's why you must love your wife. Amen. Because she'll outlive you. He went to Nazareth and there he was the carpenter's son. He was learning how to put things together. If you can't put things together in a physical realm, you won't be able to stand behind a wooden pulpit and put people's lives together. He spent all those years and when the fullness of his time came, he was released into ministry by his older cousin, the older priest John, to fulfill all righteousness. His cousin was from the ironic order of the priesthood and he was a prophet. He was from the priesthood of Melchizedek but came to submit to the older priest so he could be released in ministry. This magnificent Christ, incomparable in every way, never wrote a song. We know he sang once after the Lord's Supper. He never wrote a book, even though he was the living word. Even though he was born in obscurity and was raised as a tender plant, he is the tree that stands by the rivers of water that cannot be moved. There was no comeliness about him that he should be desired. He was so powerful, yet so humble. It took one of the inside guys to identify him in the garden because even though he had such great power, he was so simple in every way. This 
magnificent Christ. There never was another. Every human being in time has had their match. Every human being that's been a champion, a legend, an icon has their match. In, uh, from Adam to the last man, every person has somebody that has their match. As a geologist, Jesus is the rock of ages. As a psychologist, he is the chief counselor. As a beautician, he is totally wonderful, the fairest of 10,000. As an alchemist, he takes that which is weak and makes it very precious and strong. As an economist, he takes those that are born in poverty. He became poor that for our sakes we might be made rich. As a politician, he gave us our rights to stand at the throne of grace where we can obtain grace to help us in time of need. As our lawyer, he has given us access by defending us. Amen. As our royal monarch, he has given us our kingdom rights from land to being princes and kings and priests with God. As an active apostle, he has given us access to revelation knowledge and to understand the mysteries of the kingdom of God. As a prophet, he has made declarations to us and in us, calling things that are not as though they already were. As an evangelist, he has harvested us in the net of heaven before we were like Jeremiah in our mother's womb. He came as an eloquent speaker. He came as a mystery maker. Sisters and brothers, every man has his match. You have Confucius, but he was matched by Gautama, Archimedes, Galileo, Homer, Plato, Hippocrates, Socrates, and Aristotle. You have Nebuchadnezzar, Ahasuerus. You have Alexander the Great. You have uh, Julius Caesar. You have Augustus Caesar. He is matched, uh, Augustus is matched by Pompey and Cassius and possibly Brutus. You have August, you have Pope Gregory. You have Francisco. You have Ignatius. You have Polycarp, Irenaeus. And sisters and brothers, Throughout history, every person has their match. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is unmatched. Please say that again, he is unmatched. Amen. My computer is not unmatched. It's giving me demons and grindles. Amen. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, he came as priest. He came as prophet. And he came as king. He is priest, he is prophet, he is king. Turn to your neighbor and say, he found his notes. <laughs> Every person has their match. Amen. You have uh, Cicer Cicero and Marcus Aurelius. You have Ignatius and Polycarp. You have Gregory and Aquinas, Al Cid and Charlemagne, Magellan, Vasco da Gama. You have Nelson, you have Marco Polo. You have uh, Napoleon, he was defeated by Wellington. You have Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, Balotelli, Raphael, Rembrandt, Picasso, Beethoven, Tchaikovsky. Mozart, Strauss, Byrne, Shakespeare, Wesley, Spurgeon, Booker T. Washington, George Washington Carver, John G. Lake, Seymour, Hitler, Mussolini, Churchill, Roosevelt, Babaloa, Idiosa, Parham, Bishop Mason, Kwame Nkrumah, 
Julius Ureri, uh, Kawunda Seretsikama, Mugabe, Mandela, Malcolm X, Martin Luther King Jr., Oral Roberts, T.L. Osborne, Abacha? <laughs> we have Guyan. <laughs> Only uh, uh, you have a uh, Ibu, you have a uh, Yoruba. <laughs> Amen. Uh, you have Magic Johnson, you have Michael Jordan, you have Alex Ferguson, you have Arsene Wenger, you have Klopp. You have Pep Guardiola. You have Liverpool. Do I hear Arsenal? Do I hear Man City? Do I hear Wigan? Do I hear the Black Stars? <laughs> you have Adam, there's Enoch. Cain, Abel. Melchizedek and Abraham. Isaac and Ishmael. You have Esau and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Miriam, Deborah, Moses, Aaron, stay with me, Hannah and Ruth, Joshua and Caleb, David, Jonathan, Ethan, Solomon, Elijah, Elisha, Jeremiah, Isaiah, Daniel, Ezekiel, Every man has the equal. You have James and John, Peter and Paul, Barnabas and Silas, Timothy and Titus, and the list goes on and on and on. Everyone has their match. But in all of the names we have listed, there's only one that stands alone. Jesus, the incomparable Christ, you can't put Muhammad next to Jesus. He rose from the dead. You can't put any martyr next to Jesus who shed their blood for a cause. We thank God for the blood they may have shed for a cause. But there's one that stands alone whose blood is living in the heavens on the throne of grace right now. He stands alone, making intercession for you and for me. His blood will never lose its power. Not now, not ever. In fact, all the angels, there's Michael and Gabriel, all of the angels bow down. They are under his command. And every devil has been crushed under his feet. He stands alone. Shout three times. There's no one like Jesus. Come on. Clap your hands if you have to. There's no one like Jesus. The Bible is still the best selling book ever. Ever. There are more songs written about Jesus than any other theme in the world. More books written about him than any books written in the world. Every single day, in particular on Sundays, he's the one that is spoken about the most than all features in the world. He's still an A-lister. He's still on the top of all the best sellers ever. He's Jesus. He is Christ. He is Lord. He is King. He is Apostle. He's Author. He's Finisher. He's Beginning. He's the End. He's everything in between. He's the Bread of Light, Life. He's the Light of the World. He's the Rock of Ages. The Sweet Rose of Sharon. He's Jesus who stands alone. And to think that where two or three are gathered together in his midst, that Jesus is in this place right now to heal you, to lift you, to forgive you, to raise you, to prosper you, to encourage you. Give him a praise! Give him a praise!
You may be seated. Two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. You may be seated. He comes to us, sisters and brothers. He comes to us as our priest. But just not as a priest. His order is a celestial order. He comes to offer sacrifices. The function of a priest is to offer sacrifices. We as human beings, we come and offer the sacrifice of praise. Praise and worship is not just to come into his presence with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We must give God what he deserves, a sacrifice of praise. That is the fruit of our lips giving praise to God. Praise and worship must cost you something. You must serve the Lord God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. Don't come after praise and worship. Come for praise and worship. Praise and worship is for Him. The Word of God is for us. Praise and worship is to give Him what He wants. The Word is to give us what we need that grows our faith. Faith comes by, hearing comes by, without faith it is to please God. And so faith is the substance of, so if you need something, you have to have faith that comes. That faith comes by the word that you receive. And so he comes to us as priest to offer sacrifices. No priest would have been able, Caiaphas definitely not, would be able to offer the Passover, the lamb that he was. The first Passover was in 12 of Exodus to celebrate 430 years of horrendous slavery. And after nine plagues, the 10th plague, they killed a lamb that had been separated for 14 days. No spot, no blemish, not blind, not crippled. It had to be killed, bloodshed, applied on the doorposts. They were to roast that lamb, eat it standing, because that was the night of Passover. Death, because of sin, was coming to all of Egypt. And the Lord said, when the angel sees the blood, I will thank God for the blood there's power in the blood the blood washes whiter than snow there's victory in the blood I don't know why there are preachers in the world today who are taking blood out of the pulpit and say it is too gory have you watched any American movies every second scene is a scene with blood have you seen video games that kids are playing? It's full of blood. The only place they don't want us to talk about the blood is in church. But the devil is a liar. We overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's under the blood. Say, Bishop, peace is under the blood. Ah, by the blood of Jesus, devils tremble. By the blood of Jesus, sins are forgiven. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. The writer said, this man entered in once into the holiest of holies and took an exhibit of his efficacious blood and when the father saw the blood all sin from Adam to the last man that will ever be born washed away by the blood this priest stood up and gave an account of his work in the earth and when he descended into hell crushed that devil made captivity captive, gave gifts unto men, and on his way lifted up all those from the righteous, from Adam, all the way to the person that died just before the crucifixion. 
he said to the thief on the cross who acknowledged his lordship he said nam tanje today you will be with me you'll be the first beneficiary of this blood i have shed because the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy so i got to let blood come on this thief to reverse what that thief took in the very beginning shout i want it back i said shout i want it back as a priest uh, he came with a perfect sacrifice as a priest he came with perfect blood as a priest he came with perfect passion as a priest he died with a perfect burial a perfect resurrection to fulfill God's perfect plan who has believed our reports and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed he was despised and rejected of man a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief and we hid as it were our faces from him he was despised and we esteemed him not and surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows yet we did him esteem him stricken and smitten of god he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed all we like sheep have gone astray but the lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all he was oppressed and he was afflicted yet he opened not his mouth he was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers he was dumb so he opened not his mouth this jesus pure in every way this jesus beautiful in every way and god has given him a name that's above every name how sweet the name of jesus how precious the name of jesus how transforming the name of jesus how liberating the name of jesus that at the name of jesus every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god a song writer said take the name of jesus with you child of sorrow and of woe it'll joy and comfort give you take it then wherever you go precious name oh how sweet hope on earth and joy in heaven jesus is lord everywhere in this universe clap your hands for the lord jesus he stands sisters and brothers as a prophet not just as a priest jesus is the prophet oh yes he was he was the lamp in abraham's covenant in genesis 15 he was the ram on mount moriah caught in the horns in substitution for isaac he was abraham's priest melchizedek up to the battle he's isaac and rebecca's well he's jacob's ladder he's rachel's stone that was rolled away he's judah's praise his levi's offering his joseph's coat of many colors his israel's passover lamb his miriam's tambourine celebrating the defeat of the enemy his moses rod that separated the sea sweetened the waters of mara brought water out of a rock in rephidim his moses rock that he sat on when they defeated the amalekites he's the manna for the children of israel in the morning time he's the chicken for the children of israel at evening time he's the clown by day he's 
the fire by night. He's the tabernacle. He's the courtyard, the holy place, and the holiest of holies. He's the brass, the silver, and the gold. He's the water, the oil, and the blood. He's the manna that's in the ark. He's Aaron's rod that budded. He's the tables of stone. Can I preach this, Jesus? He's Joshua's trumpet the seventh time around Jericho. And when that trumpet sounds, every wall around your life must fall. Jesus, sound the trumpet tonight. Bring down the walls that have kept African people down. He's Caleb's mountain. He's Ehad's left dagger killing that king his Gideon's torch his Jephthah's valor his Samson's strength his Hannah's intercession his Samuel's prophecies whose words never fall to the ground his Elijah's fire from heaven his Elisha's double portion anointing he's the mantle that Elisha caught his Ruth's cleaning power his Boaz field, his Jesse's son, his David the giant killer, he's the rock that killed the giant and the sword that cut off Goliath's head. Can I preach like a Felix? He is the praise in Ziklag when he David encouraged himself in the Lord. Up his Solomon's wisdom, his Ethan's eloquence. He's Isaiah's prophetic view. He saw the smoke in the tabernacle. He's Jeremiah's tears. He's Ezekiel's four faces. He's Ezekiel's valley of dry bones come to life. Can I preach like I feel it? He's Isaiah's love for the undesirable. He's Haggard's silver and gold. He's Obadiah's possessions. He's Zechariah's prisoner of hope. He's Malachi, window of heaven, pouring out a blessing on your life that you won't be able to receive it. He's Matthew's genealogy. He's Mark's action man. He's Luke's healer. He's John's lover. He's the Holy Ghost in Acts. He's the justified by faith in Romans. He's grace in the book of Galatians. He's the church in power in Ephesians. He's my God shall supply all of my need in Philippians. He's the perfected word in Thessalonians. Shout is Jesus. Give him a praise. Not only, not only is he a priest, not only is he a prophet, but he's also a king. The kings came in the beginning. King Nimrod was the first. Tried to build a kingdom for himself. And God said, you can't build a kingdom for yourself. Disperse the people. Other kings rose up. There was Nebuchadnezzar and Ahasuerus. Saul and David. Solomon, Rehoboam, you name the kings. But there's one king. When Caesar, when a pilot asked him, are you a king? He said, you say it. But then he said, my kingdom is not an earthly system. My kingdom is not of this world. I have a kingdom in the holy skies, in the celestial world, where earthly thrones are but footstools to me. I'm a king above kings. He's coming back, not as a defeated man. He's coming back not as a lamb slain. He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Oh, hail King Jesus. Be King. Rule in my heart. Jealousy will not rule on the throne of my heart. Hate will not 
not rule on the throne of my heart. Selfishness will not rule on the throne of my heart. Poverty will not rule on the throne of my heart. No human being or system will rule on the throne of my heart. The throne of my heart is reserved for one king. He's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's coming soon to sort out this mess. He will judge the living and the dead. And so shall we ever be with this Jesus. He stands alone as a priest. He stands alone as a man. He stands alone as a prophet. He stands alone as a king. He stands alone as a savior. He stands alone as the author and finisher of our faith. He stands alone on the church he has built. Give him a praise. I was at a meeting a few months ago. I'm done. I want to pray in a minute. And in the meeting, one of our leading, how can I say this without divulging too much, apostles in our group had traveled several times into Northern Africa. And he is being told that Jesus is appearing in Islamic groups. One of them was in one village. A man went to sit in the village square drinking his ridiculously strong coffee and he looked troubled and his best friend came was also troubled and a few others came and he said why are you troubled to the oldest one he said I dreamt of Yeshua Jesus who came to me in the dream and said I am the Savior you have been looking for the second elder said I had the same dream. The next one said, I had the same dream. In fact, by the time the sun had got to nine o'clock, every man, every woman, every child had had the same visitation of this Christ. I'm telling you, Jesus is moving in the most unprecedented ways throughout the earth. There is no way the devil's going to get away with all the rubbish that he has put humanity through. Jesus is Lord. He's coming back for a victorious, liberated, powerful, rich, anointed church. Shout, that's me. He's coming back for people who have an understanding of who he is and what he has done. Shout, that's me. He's coming back for those who understand the finished work of Christ and what he's delivered unto us freely. Shout, that's me. He's coming back for those who understand the covenant he cut with us. And we are beneficiaries of that covenant. Shout, that's me. If that's you, clap your hands and praise the Lord. Everybody's standing. It's time for us to receive our offering. I'd like to tag this a little bit on what Doc said in the first ministration this evening. Some people that may be struggling with forgiving something or someone. That might be you. A gift helps facilitate breaking those things because sometimes you want to move but there's stuff pulling you back. Your gift has a way of breaking things. I, I have biblical examples of that. King Saul had baggage in his life, massive baggage, massive. What was holding him back from his destiny as king was the baggage he was carrying. And his servant said, 
you need a word from the Lord but you cannot go before the presence of the Lord without a gift which he did David's second horrendous sin was when he lost faith and numbered the army he was leaning on the arm of flesh and not having faith in God as in the beginning and God said to the prophet tell David six months to be fleeing in the wilderness from his enemies three and a half years of famine or three days of an angel destroying Israel David said I can't take three and a half years of famine our economy is performing too well I, I can't run in the wilderness from my enemies I'm an old man now I will take the three days of punishment and on the third day shout on the third day he raced because the angel was approaching Jerusalem, had killed 70,000, and he came to Onan's threshing floor. And Onan said, you can have this. David said, I cannot, I cannot get forgiveness. What's means, I cannot get forgiveness that costs me nothing. I want to pay the full price for this piece of land. The threshing floor is a number of things which includes metaphorically revelation knowledge costs a lot to thresh out that wheat to make flour to bake a loaf you need a threshing floor that costs a lot and so David obtained forgiveness but was unable to place husbands that were lost fathers that were lost young men that had potential that were lost but he obtained forgiveness but couldn't repay we're not asking you to pay for anything we're asking you to be empowered so god can give you the ability to forgive raise that offering i'm also going to ask you to give an offering to acknowledge the lordship of jesus christ in your life he owns everything and he wants to give you everything and sometimes we don't get everything because we are not ready to receive that and he's working a process in our life i'm praying for acceleration in your life the offerings pastor matthew called for prepare those the ones we're calling for prepare those raise them up raise it high raise it high pray after me heavenly father we bless you for this convention we bless you for the theme of this convention. We declare Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. He is my priest. He is my prophet. He has forgiven me. And I'm so grateful. Father, receive my gift in Jesus' name. Amen. You are going to be ministered to by those in the house to receive your offering. Thank you, Bishop. God bless you. Bishop, peace. Thank you, my brother.